All right, as a reminder, some of the videos here use different methods. And specifically in this section, some of the videos here use some calculus methods. So don't worry about those. We'll use the H formula that we have in our videos. So don't forget that. Okay, so I actually don't want the teacher preview. Let's start with doing example two. All right, a company's profit when it sells X thousand items is this profit function. What are the startup costs? Startup costs is their profit if they produce no items. So we could answer the start, we could answer the question, say, oh, pro profit when no items are sold, that's gonna be negative 14,000. But this wants you to say, what quantity does that mean, represent? What is that negative 14,000? It's the vertical intercept, right? When the input is zero, what's the output? We're looking for the vertical intercept. What's our vertical axis, P or X? It's P, P is our output. Input is X, output is profit. How many items does a company need to sell to break even? We could find break even point, that's when the profit's zero. Okay. Um, we don't need to find it. What is the profit zero? Profit is zero. That's when the output is zero. That's the horizontal intercept, right? Output zero, let me draw a picture, right? If we have a quadratic, when is the output equal to zero? The output is zero at the horizontal intercept. So this will be the x-intercept. This is the break-even point. How many items should the company sell to maximize profit? Well, the maximum profit, again, this is x, this is p. The maximum profit's here to determine how many items they need to sell. That's going to be the x-coordinate of that vertex. So these are like kind of tricky sometimes, but really good to kind of wrap your head around tying in the application with the theory. And so I wanted to look at this one together. We didn't really do one of these in the rest of the videos. We got more factoring practice over here. Again, I'm gonna use the AC method. You can use a different method. Um, and we have more factoring resources for you in the module if you want. So 5w squared plus 21w minus 20. So the AC method says start by multiplying our A value with our C value. That gives us negative 100. Now we two, need two numbers that multiply to this negative 100 that add to our middle number. And our middle number, our middle coefficient, is plus 21. So just start by naming some pairs. The more extreme the pairs are, the bigger the difference. Or, so... Um, we could start with 1 and 100, but that's not really going to be close. We could start with 2 and 50. No, it's not really close. 4 and 25. That multiplies to positive 100. We need this to multiply to negative 100. You could put the negative on either one. Negative 4 and 25, that adds up correctly. That adds up to 21. So these are our choices. So we leave the first one alone, leave the last one alone and split that middle term up. It's 21w, 21w is minus 4w plus 25w. Doesn't matter which order you write them in. Now we factor by grouping. The first group, we can only factor out a w and we're left with 5w minus four. The second group, we can factor out a five. What's left? 5w minus four. Great, they should always match. Next, notice that both terms have a 5w minus 4. We factor out a 5w minus 4 from both terms. The first term is only left with a w. And the second term is only left with a 5. This is fully factored. We can't factor anymore. We'll type this in. 5w minus 4, w plus 5. Let's see how we do. Nailed it. Next, let's look at number 12. Again, another formulation. 
but this time for a physical problem, rocket launching. So we have another height equation after t seconds. This time our height is in meters. So to find what height the rocket was launched, it's going to be the height at the start. What do we, what do we have here, right? T is our, in, our horizontal axis. H is our vertical axis. So the height at the start, it's going to be right here. That's our vertical intercept, our H intercept. What is the maximum height the rocket re reaches? Well, the height increases over time and then starts decreasing over time. The maximum height is going to be at the vertex. And the maximum height, specifically the H coordinate, the output of the vertex. If it comes down to the ocean, when is it going to splash down? That's going to be when the height is zero. So when is the height zero? That's our horizontal intercept, our T intercept. There we go. Just like so. We got one more problem for you. Um, which one was it? 13. All right. Fruit grower knows this is one of the longer problems. Let's write down information as we're going through it. Fruit grower knows that uh, if the fruit on a specific kind of tree is harvested at this time of year, each tree is going to yield on average 125 pounds. So one tree, 125 pounds of fruit and sell for a dollar 30 cents per pound. Each additional week, the harvest is delayed up to a point, of course. There is a domain here. Each week, the yield is increased by 3.7 pounds. Each week delay is plus 3.7 pounds per week. But the price per pound is going to go down. It's not going to taste as good. The price going to be going down by three cents per pound every week. Interesting. How many weeks should the grower wait before harvesting in order to maximize the sales revenue? Ooh. Okay. We've got a lot of things going on here. A lot of things. So we want to maximize the revenue. What is the revenue? Well, the revenue is just how much are we selling and what price? Okay, let's start by writing this as P times Q. We might switch things up a little bit. It's going to be the price times the quantity. And then the price depends on how long we wait. So does the quantity. So each of these depend on T. So we'll probably end up substituting both of these out and getting T as our only variable left. So how do these depend on T? How does the price depend on T? What is T? Let T be the number of weeks we wait for harvesting. Okay. Then what does that look like? Well, at the start, if we do it as soon as possible, we're going to wait, we're going to have some ordered pairs, right? This is a linear relationship, right? For, for the quantity, it starts at 125. It's increasing by 3.7 every week. For the price, it starts at $1.30 per pound, but it decreases every week. Oh, we have linear relationships where input is the time and our output is either the price or the quantity. We'll have two equations here. The price is some linear relationship with time and the quantity is also some li linear relationship with time. 
technically these are different slopes and different B values. So we could, we could find the slope, we could find the B value, or we actually have it written, given to us. Right, the price, oh gosh. Hold on, our color coding is wrong, guys. I said Q is red and P is blue. I just want to be color coded. So look at, let's look at our quantity. It says, well, we start at 125 and it goes up by 3.7 every week. That is the slope. That's exactly what slope means. Again, you could find this equation out the old fashioned way and take a little longer, but it gives the information right here. For the price, it says we start with $1.30 per pound, but that goes down by three cents per pound every week. So we have the revenue and we know how each quantity depends on time. So if that's the case, put in Q here. If that's the case, put in, I can't, I can't get them straight. <laughs> Q is that one. I don't know if people say it anymore, but there used to be a phrase that says, mind your P's and Q's. I really need to. So what does our revenue function look like? Our revenue function is P which is 1.3 minus 0.03 times T times Q. Q is 125 plus 3.7 times T. This is our revenue function. This is our qu uh, quadratic. This is what we want to maximize. All right. Oh, I forgot. I have another scene. You don't have to look at all that other garbage. So we're going to have to foil this out. We'll use a, you can use a calculator. 1.3 times 125. Oh, wait. Yeah, 1.3 times 125 is 162.5. So that's the first. Next is outer. 1.3 times 3.7 T. That's going to be 4.81 T. Next is inner in the foiling. Negative 0.03 times 125. Negative 3.75 T. And finally, the last, negative 0.03 times 3.7. That's negative 0.111. And that's T squared on that one. We can simplify a little bit, and then we'll have our quadratic. I'm going to write it in standard form, so the squared term comes in front. These middle terms are like terms. That's going to be 1.06, pretty sure. And then the C, this guy over here. So this is our revenue function. What are we trying to do? I forgot. How many weeks should we wait to maximize the sales revenue for a single tree? Want to maximize this revenue. How many weeks should we wait? This revenue is a parabola that faces down, right? Where this is our time axis, this is our revenue axis. We want that maximum revenue. We want the revenue to be as high as possible. When does that happen? At the vertex. So this is gonna be max when T is negative B over 2A. Negative 1.06 divided by two times negative 0.111. The negatives are going to cancel. We get 1.06 divided by 0.222. Let's use a calculator. And it told us to round to the nearest tenth of a week. Seventh of a week could make more sense. I guess that would be a little bit more complicated. 1.06 over 0.222. 4.8 about. So we should wait almost five weeks. We really want to be creative, right? We could say, how much is 0.774? 
How many days is that? There are seven days in a week. That's about five and a half days or five days. About four weeks and five days. But that's not what it asked. It asked about 4.8 weeks. What's the actual maximum revenue that we can expect for a single tree? So we know the maximum revenue has to be more than 125 times 130. Because at the very first day, the revenue is 125 pounds times 130 price per pound. We know the revenue should be more than 162 and a half bucks per day. Well, we know the revenue is going to be P times Q. So you can either plug in this whole thing or you can find P and Q. All right, up to you. Let's just use the function that we already have. It's negative 0.111t. Let's use more decimal places to get a more exact answer, 4.775. You could use the 4.8 rounded number, it'd probably be fine. Square that, plus 1.06 times t, plus 162.5. Hold on, before we look at the answer, notice this 162.05 or 162.5. That's the number I just said, that if we, what's the revenue if we didn't wait at all? Which makes sense, that is the vertical intercept here for this function. Anyway, the revenue will be about 165 bucks and three cents. No, don't post to the forum. I'll open that. And that is indeed higher than the 162.5. Although not much higher. <laughs> we're not gaining, by waiting five weeks, we're not really gaining that much. And we have to harvest a lot more fruit. We have to wait longer. Our fruit, it's worse quality. We have to harvest more of it. We make a little bit more money, but I don't know. I don't know, that doesn't sound very great. We got it right. Good. Always good news when your math professor can get a question right. Let me know if you have any questions and uh, hopefully this helps. Have a good one. Bye-bye.